Andre Pfizer. Welcome to Profoundly Speaking. Uh, we have these incredible conversations every week about this time, 6 p.m. Central Standard. And it's a conversation and dialogue and helping us to reassess the week that we've lived. Uh, we live in the light of purpose daily and in every moment. And there are some of us who are further along. Uh, when I say further along, it's not a matter that you're compared or competing with other people's beliefs. You may be further along in your faith. You may be deeper in your conviction. You may be more settled in your truth. As a matter of fact, everyone is uh, according to their degree of life. Hello, everybody. So everyone, when I say further along, I'm not talking in comparison to someone else. You are where you desire to be in your conviction. We are at the degree of our own convincing in our realization. We are further along. Some of you uh, still may be uh, checking out everything. All of us are where we desire to be. We swim as deep as we desire. We swim and go deeper in the sea based on our practice and our ability to explore. And when I have a desire to explore deeper, I'm already prepped for the decompression of the sea. When I want to explore deeper, I, I, I'm already strengthened to the degree of my curiosity. I'm already expect. it's almost, let me put it this way, uh, when we play contact sports, when you know you're gonna get hit, that was a way that you could brace yourself to, to lessen the blow, but you know you're gonna get hit. And it's like that in our faith or in our belief, you are where you are most confident. And so every week we have a discussion based on where we are in our faith, in our realization, in our submission to God. As we submit to God, we spoke about that today in prayer at noon. Uh, submit to God. In other words, God makes himself. We don't make ourselves the Lord. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. I know God made me, so when I adhere to my master, I'm not a dog, but I'm his resource. He's my source. I'm his resource when I submit to the bidding and to the mindset of my master. I can resist every limited thing. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Not resist a person, but resist any doubt or fear or limitations that come from anything opposing what I'm adhering to. When I submit to my Father, when I submit to the source, since I'm a divine reality and byproduct of the source, as I adhere to the powers and the principle of the source, I can resist the enemy. I can resist limitations. I can resent anything in dark and it'll run away from me. I, it'll, it'll leave me. Because temptation is not wrong to be temptation to be tempted, but temptation is merely an invitation for you to leave your place. Temptation is just an invite to leave your place, and I don't have to accept invitations to leave my sacred spot. I don't have to receive an invitation. If I receive an invitation, there may be a silent current that's asking for the invitation. Maybe I'm afraid to ask for it physically. Or, or vocally, but if I'm desiring to leave my place, then temptations will come. Uh, it says, don't, don't say that when you're tempted, you're tempted of God, but every temptation uh, is we're, we're drawn after by our own lust and entice. It means that I'm curious to leave my place, and if I'm seeking to leave my sacred place, then I will create an opportunity for me to leave. So we talked about that. So every week we just have a discussion on our personal confidence and where we are in our realization. Where are you in your realization? Where are you in your divine realization of self? Are you finding yourself secure in the submission to the master teacher, the, the lordship of the divine mind? I'm submitted to that. I realize that's what I am. I'm, I, I'm living not who you told me I was, but what you told me revealed itself to me. We talked about that today too, the, uh, discovering ourselves. Uh, 
a lot of things we know and welcome everyone. I'm glad to see you and thanks for being uh, consistently faithful to profoundly speaking. Uh, there are a lot of things that we know through information via people or books. But when what you know talks to you itself, that's when it begins to secure you in this divine nature. I begin to live what it's been, what's been revealed to me. And when I live what's revealed itself to me, no atmosphere or element will shake it from me. Whenever I give information that hasn't been revealed to you, you are at the mercy of your own faith, your lack of faith, shame, poverty, element, people, place, things. When, when we know information by way of another, that information is at the mercy of everything else. But when the information that you know reveals its own self to your blood and to your own spirit and you become the knowing, how do you know you know when it's revealed to me? When it's revealed to me, I finally am living the I am that I was told that I was. I'm living what I realize I am. I'm not real living what you said I was. I'm not living from an identity that comes from rhetorical conversation. I'm not living an example that you put together. I'm not living a, hy a hypothetical that you put together. <clears throat> I'm living an identity revealed to me. Raise your hands if you know what I'm talking about. I'm, the I am that I'm living is a realization that was revealed to me, which naturally gives me the confidence to live it because it's me. I'm not living what you said and think that you're going to take it back because I'm angry with you or you're angry with me. If I'm living a conditional revelation based on how you feel about me today, I will always be at your mercy because when you don't feel that way about me tomorrow, you're going to take back what you said. That's why the identity is a spiritual revelation to you. I can tell you what the scriptures say you are. I could break it down. But until the spirit of what you live reveals you to you, then you'll always be living at the opinion of another, whether it's positive or negative. Am I making sense? Has your identification? Has your identity been spiritually revealed to you by the Father? It's not a matter I'm who he says I am. It's what you know you are by revelation because a lot of us know what the Father says about us and still struggle with it because it hasn't been re revealed. What he said has yet to be revealed based on how we submit to God. Am I making sense, guys? Say, I get a little excited and I don't want to lose it. What he says must be revealed. I used to read it in the scriptures all the time, but we're created in his image. And after a while, it's a verse that I could rhetorically remember. It's a verse that I could remember and I could, I could, I could say it back. I could say it back in Sunday school. What does Genesis 1, 20 say? I'm a creator of his own image and like it. You got it right. I got a star. What does it say? Well, the Bible says... And after a while, when you really begin to know by revelation who you are, you will never have to say, well, the Bible says, you will say, I am. You will no longer have to say, well, the Bible said, you will no longer have to point to the scripture and, and use it to confirm your argument. You will become the argument. You will become the catalyst of the argument. You will become the convincing power of the argument. I am I am who God, I am this, I am this, as long, as long as I hear it and it hasn't been revealed, a, dis a, a, a dysfunctional relationship will make me forget it. A sickness will make me forget it. Poverty will make me forget it. A car wreck will make me forget it. A flat tire will make me forget it. My lights off will make me forget it. A cold front that knocks that busts the pipes will make me forget it. Uh, someone lying on me will make me forget it. When people lie on you and you forget who you are, you never knew who you were. Because offense will make you deal with the negative illusion. When you know who you are, offense will never make you forget 
Have you ever been offended and forgot who you were? Has your children ever disobeyed you and you forgot who you were? Because it means you remember at the point of your conviction. Your steadfastness is based at the point of your conviction, not I got to work on it. No, 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 no. The, the more at the, at, the, at the degree of revelation revealed determines your consistency in your identity. Am I making sense, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, issues will make you forget your identity because you never knew it. You can't forget what you never knew. You might forget what you tried to know, but you can't forget or reveal truth. Write this down. It is impossible for me to forget a revealed truth. Thanks, Adrene. It's impossible for me to forget a revealed truth. I might forget a spoken truth. I might forget a heard truth, but I can't forget a revealed truth. I am who God is. My identity, not just what I do with my gift, but who I am, what I am. I could write it and put it on mirrors and write it on tapes and read it to myself, but until it reveals itself to me, I'll just be reading it to myself. And there's nothing wrong with affirmations. There's nothing wrong with hearing it. But when it reveals itself to me, it will hear me instead of me hearing it. It will, hear, it will hear my life instead of me hearing it. I won't have to say it to sound it. I will sound it and it will say it. You see the difference? You see the difference? When, I, when, when, it, when I'm truth revealed, when I become truth revealed, I'll never forget it. But until it reveals itself, my mom can make me forget it. My dad can make me forget it. My money can make me forget it. Uh, my, uh, my job will make me forget it. Uh, getting laid off will make me forget it. Sickness will make me forget it. I must become what I cannot forget. Write that down. Oh, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this, Lord. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. Yeah. Yeah. I must become what I cannot forget. See, this sounds good, but when it, when, when it finally reveals itself to you, it says faith come by hearing. So it means I hear, as I hear, I, I faith comes by hearing, but it becomes the word of God when it reveals itself. <laughs> See, faith don't come by just hearing God. It comes by God revealing itself to you. You understand? It got to reveal itself to you. A lot of you heard the word, but most of us hadn't become it because what we heard has yet to reveal itself to say, this is it. And so we still read it, and we still read it. It's all right, we read it. We read it, we read it, but it hadn't revealed itself. We might get a thought, but there comes a time where it must reveal itself to your life, and then you become it. And when I become it, I can't forget it. Nothing can make me forget it. Nothing can make me forget it. Nothing. That's why Paul said, neither height or depth, uh, width, uh, depth or life or angel, anybody can separate me from. Nothing can separate me. Nothing. Because he got the revelation of it. See, we quote it, but do you get the revelation of it? We quote the scripture, but do you get the revelation of it? Your salvation and your becomingness is in the revelation of the word, not just in the quoting of it. And when you get the revelation of it and you begin to identify with it, you begin to have authority in it. But, I, but there is no revelation without submission to God. I can't get revealed truth when I'm not aligned or submitted to God where the enemy is being resisted by me. Not a devil, but the opposing thought. Not just the devil with the, the points and the tail and stuff, but an opposing thought, an opposing opinion, a limited, slanderous, accusational opinion. And he says that when I'm submitted and got the revelation, when I'm submitted, not just I do what he say, 
but my mind is secured and submitted to the Lordship that made I'm submitted to the one that made me a Lord. I'm, a, I'm submitted to the king that made me a king. We're kings and priests and kings and, and lords of lords. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. As I'm submitted, not just to a pastor, but when I'm submitted to the master, when I'm submitted to my father, I become what I'm submitted to. If I'm submitted to memory, then I'm, memory tells me how to take everything. If I'm submitted to trauma, if I'm submitted to childhood trauma, if, some, if I'm submitted to submitted to it, they didn't ever said nothing to me or they never spoke to me. I didn't have a daddy. I didn't have a mama. They never talked to me. If I'm submitted to how people treated me, then how people treated with me would be how, how I perceive everything else. If I'm submitted to God, I can resist the limited and it will flee from me. It will flee from me. If I resist the enemy, they, he will flee from me. When is the last time an opposing thought flee, fled from you? When is the last time an opposing thought to your identity ran away from you? When is the last time that an opposing law ran from you? When I resist it or don't answer the invitation, it runs off. It leaves. Issues are designed to leave according to your submission. Not according to your word, but according to your submission. Your submission to God empowers you with the word. What you submit to gives you its power. I can't charge my phone except if I, if I don't plug it up. If I submit my phone to the charger and my charger is plugged and I got electricity in my house because I could plug my phone to the charger. There were times in our life our lights were off and my phone was plugged to the charger. So you got to have power in the house, not just power in the outlet. If you got power in the house, you have power in the outlet. How many of you have power in your house, not just power in your charger? You got the right tools, but do you have power in the house? You may pay a cell phone bill, but the main bill is the electric bill. You could pay, your phone could be on and you still have no power in your house because it costs more to pay for the power in your house than it pays for your phone. You hear what I'm saying? So in your house, is your house empowered? Your life is your house empowered through being plugged in to your father. You have to be plugged into your father in order for your house your life to have power. You can't plug in sincerity. You can't plug in good intention. You can't plug and read my mind. You got to be plugged into the source in order to have power in your house. And when you got power in your house, you can plug everything else in your house to you and it'll give life to everything that plugs into you because you are plugged in. You, you, am I making sense? Am I making sense? When you're plugged into the source, whatever the source has, you have. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. The name of the tree is God. God is the culmination of Jesus and me. Who is God? Jesus and me put together makes God. Jesus as the vine, us as the branches. The name of the tree is called God. Who is God? A culmination of Jesus and us. Jesus and us together infuse, creates God. The name of the tree is called God. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branch. As the branch, whatever's in the vine is in the branch. And when I'm a branch, I don't have to ask the vine for anything because I am and the vine are one. I'm a branch. I'm an extension of the vine. Whatever is in the vine is in me. I don't have to say nothing. I don't have to say I'm hungry because when the vine eats, I eat. When the vine drinks, I drink. Whatever is in the vine is in the branch. But most of us are living as though we're 
pieces of sticks torn off the vine. And when I'm torn off the vine, then I'm lost because I'm torn off the vine. And it's not the Spirit's desire for anyone to be lost in themselves. The biggest torment in life is to be alive and successfully live as something you are not. The biggest lake of fire you will ever experience is to successfully live as someone you're not. To live as an imposter, to live as a copy successfully is the greatest torment you'll ever experience. And God, it's not the Father's pleasure that any man be lost. It's not the Father's pleasure for any man to live not knowing who and what they are. It's not the Father's pleasure to make sure you're in an air-conditioned kingdom. It's not the Father's pleasure for any man to live all of his life not ever realizing what he is. But the hell is to succeed at it. The hell is to be successful at being an illusion. That is the hell. Go, to go to hell is to live your life successfully as an imposter. Because the imposter will never know his own heart. The, the imposter will live doing good from something that's not there. It's not the father's will. That's, that's the burning. That's the lake of fire. And to be that way forever, to live and not ever realize. It's not a matter of living and saying, Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me for cussing. But the biggest curse is to live and never be born. The biggest curse is to be alive while never have been born. That's the biggest, oh my God, that is the greatest pain you will ever have is to live and never be awakened. And to live and to get married and to have children and to become rich. And to go to church and to have children and to make money and never awaken to who you really are. The biggest pain is to find your gift before you find yourself. The biggest thing is to survive off a gift while never ever seeing you until you are revealed to you. A lot of us want to know what our gifts are. We want to know, am I this? Am I D? Am I, am I C? What's my, I'm trying to find my complex human trait. And we're so interested in trying to find our traits and our personality trait, but we have yet to be revealed to ourselves. And when you are revealed to yourself, you will become what life will never make you forget. You will become what no trial will ever make you forget. You will become what no financial collapse or government can make you forget. And you will no longer have to say it to yourself, but it will say it to you. When I become my revealed truth, the atmosphere will speak a truth, speak it to me. Behold, this is my beloved son. When Jesus heard his revealed truth, the heaven said, this is my son. When was the last time you heard that atmosphere say, this is my son? It'll speak it to you. You'll hear it like thunder. This is my son. I don't have to say it. It will announce me. Oh, yeah. But it starts with submission to God. Yeah, yeah, revealed truth. When it revealed, Melissa, when it reveals itself to me, not just when I hear it and keep reading it and write notes on it, because I don't have to practice off anybody else's truth. I don't have to say, well, this person said, and I really like it. I really like what they said. It's fire. I really like it. No, when it becomes your revelation, you'll say, I am this. You will no longer have to say the scripture said that I'm. You'll get up and say, I'm this. And you'll speak with this audacity, this bodacious boldness, this cold audacity of, yeah, I'm that. I'll talk as God. I'll be Christ speaking as God. And I won't have to, 
See, the scripture said I could to get intellectual permission from other people to say what I'm saying. I will walk in bodacious clarity, the audacity of clarity, and speak it as though I am he. And I won't have to worry about people saying, you ain't God. Who you think you are? No, it's not who I think I am. It's what was revealed to me to be. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? It's not the Father's will that any should perish. It's not the Father's will to lose anybody. He wants me to remember and wake up to see. And the biggest pain is to live successful and never have been born. It's like a divine miscarriage, a potential of what could have been, but the baby never made it. It's like I've been miscarried. How many people are living miscarried lives? I, I'm alive, but I never was born. Oh my God. What DNC can fix that? Oh my God. What, what can help that? That's the biggest hell you'll ever experience. And I don't want you to experience that. But see, I can't say repeat after me. Because to find yourself is not a repeat after anything. I could say, quote, Romans 10 and 9. But really, I can't make you repeat nothing after me. And if you say it, no, it has to reveal itself. You must allow it to reveal itself. Allow revelation to reveal itself. You can't repeat after me. Because I remember repeating after everything and didn't wake up. It just shows that you can hear and follow instructions well. But you allow the truth to reveal itself and repeat after it. How do I repeat after revelation? Live it out. Live out what you see. Live what it shows you in boldness and audacious, audacious, audacious clarity. Live it out. Repeat it every day. Don't repeat it in word, repeat it in life. How many of you are repeating what he showed you? Repeat it over and over. Do it again. Do it again. Allow revelation to reveal itself and then you repeat it as you live. It'll save you every day. Repeat what the revelation is. Repeat it. Don't just tell somebody about it so they can understand it. You don't have to tell anybody to understand anything. Repeat it in life. That's right. Andrew Knight, repeat it in life, live it out, walk it out, and you'll find yourself. I'm Andre Fazer. Hey, go to Apple Store or Google Play and download the Pfizer Interglobal app. There's videos on there, many videos that you could look at it, about one minute videos, different uh, word thoughts. There's uh, podcast, there was teachings, there were a lot of things on there. Check it out for yourself. It's a good resource to have. You can also order my many books on uh, the app or go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon. Just Google me and get resources that are out there. Be intentional. Don't just know me. Get to study things that I've been talking about. Uh, and connect with us every week at 6 o'clock. Central Standard for Profoundly Speaking. Hope these things have been blessing you. And share it on your website, okay? Share them on your Facebook or your social media. All right? It's a honor to meet you and listen. Hey, bless you, my friend. Thank you, Melissa. Honor to meet you, too. But yeah, and if you want to give a soul financially, uh, you could go to dollar sign Coach Pfizer and give through Cash App. Or you could go to, to the invest financially on the app and give through PayPal or go to www.andrepfizer.com and go to financial investment. And so whatever you want, just to say, hey, thank you for speaking to my life. Thank you. I want to buy, I want to purchase something out of the store. 
the store of your mind, the store of your time. I want to purchase something. I want to bless you for that. And I want to purchase something. I want to purchase that responsibility. I want to purchase that accountability. I want to purchase that. I just can't buy a revelation, but I want to purchase my time back. And I really appreciate you, okay? And we'll be seeing you soon. Share this. God bless you.